appreciate God. We've already prayed, so we're going to get right into the Word of God. And um, da, 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 da. praise the Lord. You know, we've been talking about Psalms chapter 23 and verse 3 where God tells us that he restores our soul. He strengthens us. We have looked at the word restore, which really means to bring back to original condition. And if you remember, over the last several weeks, we have been given to note and We've looked at how important it is that God wants to do things for us and to restore us and to bring us back to a condition that we previously once were. And um, when we look at that word restore and we understand that God wants to do that for us, we've also looked very intensively, intensively or looked um, at the fact that God has given man a power of choice, a free will. And we found out through our study that God made us that way. God formed us that way. God built us that way. He articulated his will into man when he said that we were created his image and likeness. And when we found what that word um, created in his image, that word image is that we're a reflection or a likeness of God. And we began to look at some of the things for a reflection of God. Then we looked at how if God was holy, we all agreed God was holy last week, then man has to be holy. We looked at how God was a spirit. This week we're going to look at the Trinity of God and the Trinity of man. And we, we may say, well, you know, this is kind of off topic of, of how, how, does this, how does that really work into um, stress and things of that nature. Well, we're still talking about the emotional realm. We're still talking about how God put these feelings and emotions into us. And it's important to understand why God did it and how he did it. But yet, to know that if we're a reflection of God, then we have to be of the same likeness of God as well. And so, what we found through our study last week is that, that not only are, that, that, that we're a reflection of God, but we know that through Scripture that God is a trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we can see that beginning in John chapter 3 and verse 34. How many of you like the background this week? Isn't it yummy? For, for, he sent, for he is sent by God. Who? Jesus. He speaks God's words and God gives him the spirit without limit. So right here we see the plurality of the Godhead. Because he's talking about Jesus. He was sent by God. He speaks God's word, for God gives him the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, without limit. Some translations say without measure. So we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Notice with me in Acts chapter 1, verse 4. And when he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promises I told you before. Again, we see the mention of the plurality of the Godhead. What, does the mean, what do we mean by plurality? The Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one speaking in this particular verse of, of Scripture. And when he's finished eating, he tells them or commands them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father. The Father sends the gift some translation says, and tarry until the Spirit or the Holy Spirit. So again, we see the plurality of the Godhead. 
uh, in this particular uh, verse of Scripture. And one more to just confirm this. Notice in John chapter 14 and verse 16 this morning, John chapter 14 and verse 16, it said, And I will ask the Father, and he will give another advocate. That word advocate is a comforter or a counselor who will never leave you. Again, this is Jesus speaking. He's giving advice or counsel to his, uh, his disciples, and he says, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another, an advocate. The, the Greek word is paraclete for the Holy Spirit. He's a counselor, a standby, an advocate. What's an advocate? An advocate goes before, uh, an attorney is an advocate. They advocate on your behalf. What does that mean? Man, they go to bat for you. If you need the bully, they're the bully. If you need to, if you need, we have an advocate uh, for John Michael within the school district that works with us when we go into what they call ARDS. She is very well versed in state law. I want you to know we have an advocate. His name is the Holy Spirit. He's very well versed in God's law. And he will show you things to come. And he will unfold and unveil unto you the the necessity of what needs to be spoken through the word of God if we'll just adhere to him. If we'll listen to him. He knows more than we do. Hallelujah. He's part of the Godhead. He's with the Father. He's with the Son. But he's now here in the earth with us. Revealing the plan of God. And so, hallelujah. So then we see within this particular passage of Scripture in verse 17, it goes on to say, He is the Holy Spirit. This is, let me go back to verse 16. And I will ask the Father, John 14, verse 16, it says, I will ask the Father, and He will give another advocate who will never leave you. I like that, another advocate. That tells me that He's not the only one. Uh, Jesus is your advocate. Man, he went, he, <laughs> Jesus, let me tell you what that dude did. He gave his life. He advocated your sin so that you could have eternal life. He became what we should be, and we became what he was. We, he was the Son of God. We are the children of God. He was a king and a priest. We are kings and priests unto our God. Hold your head high up this morning, saints, because there's nothing, there's nothing that can overcome, conquer, defeat, and bring you to naught, because the greater one is living on the inside of you this morning. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And then he said, I've got to go back to heaven. My job's finished, but I'm not leaving you alone. I'm sending you another. And look at verse 17 of John chapter 14. It says, he is the Holy Spirit. He leads you into all truth. And the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. He's talking about, he's talking about when Jesus, when Jesus comes into our heart, the Holy Spirit comes in to bear witness and reference of the fact that we are now born again. That's why you have that assurity that no matter what happens, you're on your way to heaven when you accept Jesus, because he's bearing witness of the fact that you are alive unto God. But Jesus isn't talking about just this one incident. Jesus is talking about a secondary incident where he says, and you shall be Filled with power after the Holy Ghost has come on upon you. Look with me. Look with me. Who has a Bible? <laughs> We're going to go a different direction. Let me see your Bible, please. I'm going to borrow it. No. My Bible's in my car. If you want to go out to my car and get it, yes. Acts chapter 1. I have a whole different message right here on paper. In my pocket, where they should be. It's in the back seat. So we see here that Jesus is talking about a day that is to come. 
He is the Holy Spirit who leads us in all the truth. So we're talking about the plurality of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Each one has a distinct uh, and different role of heaven. God the Father, we say, planned the plan. God the Son executed the plan. What plan did he execute? Is the plan that the Father had planned called the plan of redemption. Now the Holy Spirit is in the earth today. His job is to reveal the plan. God the Father, God the Father planned the plan. Jesus executed the plan. And the Holy Spirit is revealing the plan. So notice then that he is the Holy Spirit who leads us into all the truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he now lives in you. Hallelujah, man. I tell you what, the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me. I can... It's what I got to say about that. Hallelujah. I mean, we ought to be excited that the Holy Ghost is living on the inside of us. Oh, that's nice. You gave me my keys back. Yes. Glory to God. Going to do it the old-fashioned way. You're old-fashioned, that's all, baby. That's why I married you. I'm a lot of rock and roll. <laughs> Acts chapter 2. Dear, 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 dear. The Holy Ghost, when we accept Jesus, comes to live on the inside of us. Jesus talked about a time and a, and a, and a dispensation that something, something more spectacular was going to happen. More spectacular being born again? Nope. I think that's, the, that's, that's the, not only the icing on the cake, but that's the Big Bang Theory right there. But he said to the apostles, before you go out, I'm going to send another. Notice in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, I want to give you just, I guess we're, we won't be on this page today. I want to give you just a little um, background of what's happening here in Acts chapter 1. Jesus is just about ready to be moved from earth to heaven permanently. And he's already died. He's already been raised. Now he's come back to talk to the boys, his boys, the disciples, to encourage them, to prepare them for what's to come, but also to give them instructions. Notice in verse 4, well, let's, verse 3 says, To whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them for 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which he said you have heard of me now did we just not read in John chapter uh, John chapter 14, he says, John 14, 16, says, I will make the Father, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all the truth. See, so the Holy Spirit is the spirit of promise that Jesus is talking about. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized. And that word baptized means in the Greek, it gives the note to a complete immersion. A complete immersion with the Holy Ghost not many days from now and when they therefore had come together they asked him saying Lord when will the time when will you restore again the kingdom to Israel and he said unto them is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power now that word power I'm reading from the King James, so if you have some different translations, it'll actually probably break these words down, but it says power, which is authority, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That word power is deutimus. It is the mighty, miraculous, working power. 
power of God. It, it's not the word exousia, which is authority, which is used in the previous scripture, but it is now the mighty. He says to the apostles, but you shall receive the mighty, miraculous working power of God after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, wait a minute. I thought the Holy Ghost was already on the inside of me. There's a difference. There's a secondary I, I want to say a, uh, an amendment to the contract. The original contract says, I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven. Jesus is living on the inside of me. But there's an addendum to the contract that says, if I want it, I can have the power of heaven to go with it. See, there's, there's the power, the mighty, miraculous, working power. Jesus, that Jesus said, and was it Acts chapter 10 and verse 38? The Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ with power, with dudamus, the mighty, miraculous, working power of God, and he went about doing good. It's imperative that we have the power, the, not just the, the, the power to become children of God, Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God under salvation. Great. We have salvation, which is, a, which is the most miraculous gift that God has bestowed on us. But he also has given the church another gift, and that's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, however you want to say it. And he is the advocate. He is the revelator. He's the one that points and convicts people to Jesus Christ. He's the one that empowers his church to rise up and to declare the truth. And then in passions and, and, and impregnates them with fire so that they go out and when they go out, lives are changed and hearts are touched. And when they lay hands on the sick, miracles begin to happen. People need to see the living God. They need to see the power of God. They need to see the miraculous of God. And that lives on the inside of you. It lives on the inside of you. But Jesus is talking about a subsequent baptism. People say, well, I've been baptized with water. Well, praise the Lord. But this is not what Jesus is talking about here. He's talking about a complete immersion of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But you shall receive power. The mighty, miraculous, working power. That same spirit that we just read that was with Jesus without measure. Hallelujah. Now, well, look at something here. Well, uh, let's go back to, hold your finger right there if you have your Bibles. Go back with me to Mark, the 16th. We looked at this a couple weeks ago, but I want to I wanna focus it on verse 19. See, because this is, this is happening in the same time frame. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic gospels, meaning that they see the same. They see from, they, the, what, they're, what they're showing us is Jesus from the hu human side, humanity side. But then John, the revelator, is showing us the Christ. He writes, he, he writes from the divine. Matthew, Mark, and Luke write from the human aspect. But notice in verse 19, so after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. We're going to see here in Acts just a moment that this is the exact time frame that Jesus is speaking to the apostles and the disciples here in Acts. And notice in verse 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with what? Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders were following. So, go back to verse 19. So, then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received into heaven and sat at the right hand of God. So we know that there's been a dispensation of time that's occurred. He's gone. But what did he say before he left? He said, wait for the promise. Don't go out. The King James says, tarry. He said, stay firm, stand here, stay right here until the promise of this, that, that, that my father is going to send comes. So we know that verse 20 then is after that fact. Because they didn't go out preaching until after the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit was manifested. So as they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders following. I'm telling you, when the Holy Ghost is in manifestation in your life, there's going to be signs and wonders following. 
what we fail to do is we fail to, to, to learn to hear the voice of the Spirit. Number one, then we fail to be obedient to the voice of the Spirit. I never see any miracles. I never see anything in my life because why? Are you spending time in the presence of God? Are you spending time with the Holy Ghost? Are you training yourself to... He'll use any able-bodied person that's available because God wants to meet people. That means that He'll use you. Say that. He'll use me. God will use me. Oh, my. Yes. I remember the first time God used me. You know, when I was... I wasn't but just a young duckling. I hadn't been born again except maybe a few months I was pretty stupid in the things of God but that's okay God uses stupidity sometimes look he used an ass to talk to Balaam and I'm not going there I had another <laughs> you, you see that th thought go through my mind I quickly shut it down so what we see, though, is that God used 12 men that were basically uneducated fishermen who'd been in the presence. One of the things we find uh, that in, in one of, just a little later in, in the Acts of the Apostles, two men are hauled before the Sanhedrin, and what are they? these men have been in the presence of the Lord. They're uneducated. We know where they came from. Man, people may know where you come from, but God knows where you're going. I tell you, I never thought I would ever be doing what I'm doing. Hallelujah. If you knew where I came from, this is almost an impossibility. But God knows where he's taken us. And we learn to listen to the Spirit. Now let's, let's move forward. Verse 9 of Acts chapter 1, And when they had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked, so that's the same thing we just read in Acts, or in Mark chapter 16. So let's, let's move down to um, let's move down to chapter 2. Verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord and in one place. Now one, I have stood in this room. What they're writing about Right here, I have stood in this room, the upper room. When I was in Jerusalem in 2013 with Pastor Odell Allen, when we were on the tour, they would say, well, we think, you know, history could show that this is possibly the place where this occurred, or they'd say, factually, we know that this is the place where it's occurred. And so when we got to the upper room, it was factual. This was the real upper room. And so it's a large room, and there's approximately, um, so verse 2, before they come there, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. People say, well, it was a rushing mighty wind, and all it sounded like it. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them, cloven tongues like as a fire that it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Now notice this. They already have the Holy Spirit who's bearing witness. When you accept Jesus Christ, he comes in to bear witness. Jesus said, though, there's a subsequent action necessary for the believer if they want it. And that is to be filled with power. Deutimus, the mighty, miraculous, working power of God. And as they were sitting there, and as they were waiting, the room was filled with the Spirit of God. And the, the Holy Ghost began to move, and they were filled, or they were baptized, or completely immersed by the Spirit, or with the Spirit of God. And when they did, there was evidence of something that occurred, and that they began to speak in other tongues, a new language. People say, well, it's just a heavenly language. You know, I just know it's a language that I don't know what it is. That's all I know. Whether it's a heavenly language or it's a language that's here in the earth. I told you the story last week about the, the missionary that was deep in the mountains of Mexico. And um, 
they were having a crusade and, and the indigenous people, most of them had never been out of that region. No, most of them were very uh, economically um, poor. They weren't educated. They were farmers. Never been out of the region. Couldn't speak anything but their dialect. They went in and they got born again. Got them full of the, what we say, full of the whole, baptized with the Holy Ghost. They began to speak in tongues or in another tongue. What's a, it, it, it would be in a different language that you don't understand. Well, the missionary said that the, one of the ladies began to speak the most beautiful English as she was magnifying God. Well, it was in another tongue to her. She didn't understand a word she was saying, but the missionary understood every word. So I don't know if it's a heavenly language or it's the languages of the earth that you just don't know. But there's enough languages of the earth that you don't know. It doesn't really matter. But we begin to magnify God. And so... Are you getting anything out of this this morning? So they were sitting and there appeared, to, and they were all, how many of them were filled? Just a couple of them? All of them were filled. I think that's an important note that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I've, I've prayed for people. I mean, Kim and I have prayed for lots and lots and lots of people to receive. In all the years that we prayed, only two people never received. And I mean, we're talking, uh, you know, boatloads. <laughs> and 30 years we've been praying for people to receive the Holy Ghost. And man, we lay hands on them. They begin, they begin to, to speak in other tongues. But the reason sometimes people don't speak in other tongues is because it says the Spirit gives them utterance. They can hear it on the inside of them, but they can't articulate it. Some people, I don't know, learning a foreign language can be difficult for me. Hallelujah. I mean, I can speak, you know, donde es the burritos? Huh? Hallelujah. Donde es the baños? <laughs> but, you know, I'm not going to, yo tengo no sesos in the escuela. What does that mean? I have no brains in the school. Well, that makes no sense, but somebody taught me that, so, you know, it must be good. But thank, thank God we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit who gives us utterance. Sometimes, sometimes it's our mind that gives us that barrier. When we ask God to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, He says that He does, and it is, and it's done. I talked to people, one guy, he said, I can hear it on the inside of me, but I can't get my mouth to... Uh, he says, it sounds like babble. It sounds like baby talk. It sounds like, who cares? Pongaske rostu pongra mahage deste kangre mu fufa katan se vandus kirava. Endesta rava hangro u dun stodovakanini. Demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. Ha 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 ha. Demonstrations of the Holy Spirit is what is needed in the earth today. For I've given of this gift, I have given of this gift for my church to empower them to be prepared to go into a dark and dying world if they will grasp it and run with it. It is already there, so stand up and declare, it is mine, I have it now, and you shall begin to speak when the utterance hasn't been there before. Say, well, that was strange. Yeah, well, you should have been on my end. God's talking to people this morning. This power is available to you. And I'm not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not ashamed of the gift of tongues. And I'm not ashamed that I'm spirit-filled. And I'm not going to hell and the tongues are not of the devil because God gave it to the church, not to the world. We, the church has distorted the plan, the will, and the purpose of God to bring the gospel powerless in, the, in, in a world that needs power. And the Holy Spirit is the powerhouse of heaven. And he's empowered the church to go in and not just tell. We don't need people just telling people about Jesus. We need demonstration of signs and wonders. <coughs> I better get moving here. So, where was I? Chapter 2. Oh, verse 4. How did I get all the way over here? 
They were filled with the Holy Ghost. Okay, and they're dwelling at Jerusalem, devout nation. Now the, the noise. Now when the, this was noised abroad, the multitudes came toward together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak what? In their own language. So that, to me that gives the note that, that when you're speaking in another tongue or in another language, you may not understand it, but it's still languages of the world. And they were all amazed. And they all marveled, saying one another, Behold, are these not which speak Galileans? Aren't these guys a little dumb? How do they know all this? And how hear we every man in our own language? And he goes on to speak. And they were all amazed, in verse 12, and were in doubt, saying one another, what, what is the meaning of this? And others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up and said, Hey, we're, it's not, we're not drunk as you suppose, but it's the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you, something exciting and wonderful happened. Ha ha, something exciting and wonderful happened. He is the Holy Spirit who leads us into all the truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him. And it doesn't recognize him, but we know him because he lives with us and in us. And he will later, in a later time, will glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm excited. This morning, there's some of you this morning that man it's your turn it's your time this message was just for you glory to God hallelujah did you get anything out of that this morning Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit he empowered the church to be effective witnesses using the same tools of heaven in which he had. The Holy Spirit. He comes to convict of unrighteousness, convict the sinner of sin, but he also comes to empower the believer to walk in the supernatural, to walk above and not beneath the head and not the tail. Notice that when Jesus went out into the ministry, that he had the Holy Spirit. He was anointed. The mighty, miraculous power of God was upon him to do the working of the ministry, to heal. It's hard. It's hard to have the 12 gifts of the Spirit in operation if you're not in connection with the Holy Spirit. Those are his calling cards. When I first was born again, you see... I didn't know much about nothing, but I had a hungry heart. I had a hungry heart. I wanted to know God oh so intimately and so deep. And I, I also wanted to grow in the knowledge of Him and, and the gifts that He had provided for the church. And so, I started out telling the Lord, I, I, Lord, I want to be used of you. I want people to see you. I want you to speak through me. And thank God that we had a, a pastor that was would adhere to the gifts of the Spirit. There was order in the church. And man, if you believe you had something from God, you just didn't stand up, and blurb it out, shout it out. You waited till you were acknowledged. And, uh, you know, I might have only a sentence. God says he loves you, but that's what he asked me to tell you. Well, the man, I'd get up there. And over the years, you know, you become more comfortable with what God has placed in you or when you speak on his behalf and there are still times God tells me, I, I, I want you to do this, I want you to do that. Ah, you know, well, you're the pastor, you. Heck yeah. Doesn't mean that I want to do everything you ask. I'm just like you. But we're cultivating an atmosphere of the Holy Spirit here. We're cultivating an atmosphere of God's glory. We're cultivating a place where people can come and be rescued and redeemed. And God is going to give you things to speak to people. Sometimes it's privately. 
Sometimes it's publicly. But don't draw back. Wait for the, the opportunity. You know, last week I, uh, we were praying for people and I went over and I was praying for Pastor Mark. And as I turned come back on the platform in just a split second of a second of a millisecond of a second I saw myself I saw myself come across the stage and I didn't do it the way I saw myself because there's not stage long enough but I just saw myself run and just tap everybody on the shoulder I saw myself do that so I, I prayed for everybody you see those are the places that we need obedience I don't know why God asked me to do that. I don't know why. Maybe he was testing me to see if I would do it. But maybe there were people that needed a touch from heaven because you know, we are transference of God's power sometimes. I've caught myself running in church, jumping in church, doing things I never thought I would ever do because it embarrasses me. It embarrasses you. But going to do something in the earth in the last days and he needs your help and he needs you hallelujah he needs you how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost and power the mighty miraculous <laughs> working power of God and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed This morning, that same Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus is here. The baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking other tongues is not something that's superficial, unreal, you know, just right out of the pit of hell. It's something that we just read that God did in Acts chapter 1. Um, a quick story, and then I'm going to pray for you. So, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? In 2013, I told you I went to Jerusalem. We were in the upper room, and there's probably, well, there's a couple hundred people in there at that time, and we began, our group was only the only one that was spirit-filled. We began to sing and pray in other tongues, and within probably 10 minutes, we were the only ones left in the room. And the leader of that particular, Pastor Bob Nichols, asked if there was anybody that was, had never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence to speak in other tongues. And one man raised his hand and he turned to me and said, I would like to have you pray for him. Now we're in the upper room. This is where the Spirit of God has been poured out. This is where it all began. And you know, I laid hands on that man. The Spirit of God hit him and he began to speak in tongues. In the upper room. Where was I mean, I'm going to go to heaven with that story. I'm going to show up with the disciples and say, hey, guess what? I was there. I did what you did. I'm the, it's just 2,000 years later. We're a little late, but we got the job done. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you again for this opportunity we've had. And we thank you for what you've done in our midst. We thank you, Father God, for the sweet Holy Spirit who's at work in the lives of people. We give you honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. You see how God just will, will, will tailor a service for just one person. One person. Hallelujah. Well, Kim and I are so delighted that, that you were with us today here at His Grace Church, man. Our time has come to an end. But that doesn't mean that the week has ended. And you could, ow! You know, and as we're closing up throughout the week, I just want to encourage you and exhort you that 
you know god's word is alive you know in in the in the world out there people like you've seen harry potter or different things and they look at you know these magical spell books and all this mystical stuff but you know sitting right in front of us is a breathing living book if you have faith and the word is alive and it's sharper than any two-edged sword and it's just like as if jesus christ was sitting right there and speaking to you the words in this bible you know, and if you approach the Word of God that way, it starts to just become real. I mean, it's realer than it's ever been. Realer? Well, I mean, More real. you know, I was refreshing my faith in the things of God. And, you know, sometimes you just take things for granted. And I start thinking about how alive the Word of God is. And uh, John Michael and I were in the hospital, and we, um, we needed something to occur. And... Um, we were there together and I said, you know, son, this book is real. It's alive. And Jesus is saying right here that by your stripes, you are healed. And um, we prayed. I'm not going to share with what we prayed. And we just started speaking God's word over the situation. And all of a sudden, that thing that we needed to happen occurred Amen. for him to be able to go home. And uh, just think about that during the week. God's word is alive. Man, we invite you to stay connected with us throughout yes. the week. Just because we're leaving here this morning, that doesn't mean there's other things that aren't going on. You can stay connected with us here at His Grace Church, www.hgc.church, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at His Grace Church 3184. Right there. And uh, man, if you like this video and you're watching after the fact, give it a thumbs up. Man, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Man, we'd appreciate having you on our channel right that's right we have several other things that are that we have at the church man it helps you to stay connected with us and what's what would be another the church app the church app that's right download it today you go to the itunes store is it or on the google the or google, google play. play and you just search for the app uh, church by ministry one and once you get the app installed you look for hgc or his great church <coughs> and you select that church as your favorite Amen. And man, if you're here in the city and you're looking for a good church, you don't have a church, we're not looking to rob you out of another church, but if you're looking for a church home or you're just new to the city, come check us out, man. 6995 Alamo Downs Parkway. We're recruiting, training, mobilizing, and uh, preparing people for the end time harvest. Amen. God's doing a great work. And so right here on campus, you say, well, pastor, man, Love to be a team member, love, love to have become part of the revolution, but I don't even live in the city. How can they help us? Well, how can you help us? You can pray for us, number one. You can uh, support us on a monthly basis online. And you can watch the, uh, you know, join us live and be a part of what we're doing. That's right, man. So if you decide to uh, become part of our prayer team, we have prayer teams, mm -hmm. and every week we send out, forgot to send it out this week, but every week we send out a little blurb, just a little one-sentence blurb of what the church is praying for. We'd appreciate your help and support in that manner. And then also, as you said, you can partner with us financially uh, to take the gospel out into a lost and dying world. How do you do that? Well, you can give online at hgc.church forward slash give. You can text to give. There's a multiplicity of ways. And the good thing about His Grace Church, one of the good things, many good things, but one of the good things is that we are a 501c3 corporation, meaning that we're a nonprofit and able to give tax deductible receipts. We're good ground. We're doing good work for Jesus. And man, we'd love to have you being part of our team. There's, we're just still in our launch stage, 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 and there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of places for people to serve, for you to serve right here at His Grace Church. Man, Kim and I love, love you all, and we're so grateful again that you've taken time to be with us today. And we believe that God has something unique to say to each and every one of you this week. And our hope is that you feel His love stronger today than you ever have before. God bless you. Thank you. Have for a good uh, week. Watching.